Is Luke McFarlane definitely right to go this week? Yes, he is, Mark. <laughs> He doesn't, no more, no more tests, that's all out of the way. No, he's passed, yeah, he's had a really good week, so last week it was positive for the most part and then had a down a late, so he'd passed the cog state and then didn't feel well, so we gave him another one, um, which he failed, so, um, but he's, he's passed it really early and he feels like me in bucks and he trained really well, so um, we'll have final selection this afternoon, we've got a few things to work through. Um, try and balance up our team, plan for Richmond, and um, we'll finalise any changes um, later this afternoon. So, other than that, I sort of can't highlight too much more selection. With no Pavlich, are you tempted to put him forward, or at least retain the option of throwing him forward at some Yeah, it is tempting, but look, he's such an important part of the back six. I, I think he's more of a swing man, really. A bit like Hunter used to be at the Eagles, I think. Yeah, he's a better backman, but you can, you can swing him forward at the right time. And what about Tanner Smith? If, if Luke comes back, is playing Tanner Smith as a taller forward an option for you? Yeah, it's an option. Look, we've got a lot of quality smalls, and we played in that cup. We were small and lively. And I thought on the weekend, when we planned to be better and organised a bit better, we were really quite mobile and dangerous, and we had lots of opportunities. We had to lower our eyes a little bit, and we had plenty of free options. So. It could have been, you know, a lot closer. Um, so, yeah, we're trying to work through it still. What do you make of Richmond's start to the season from what you've seen? I think everyone's very impressed by Richmond, aren't they? They're sort of 3-1, is that correct? I think they're 3-1 and they're right in it against the Pies, really. They just had a bad 20 minutes, which we've experienced as well ourselves to cost you. So, I. I from the outside, they've got real speed. That midfield they're invested in, you know, over five or six years now, um, is really strong with Grig. They have some good additions from outside, you know, Tuck's back to his best and, you know, the growth of Conker and, you know, Cochin and, and Deledio, you know, they've got plenty of run and experience now and, and Marrick has really balanced them up. So they found a front half that works with McGuan, that third tall, nippy, dangerous, what he was drafted as originally. Um, and pedard has been a great addition back. So they're a really well-balanced team who's ready to deliver. So we understand what we're up against is very impressive. And there's a reason everyone's talking about Richmond and they're in the headlines because their best is very good. So they'll love the space of Subiaco. So we need to get our hands on the ball. We think we're quite a good team, but we're being a bit inconsistent, which concerns us. And but we get a real opportunity to fix that in the Len Hall game on Friday night. When you talk about inconsistent, do you mean those lapses that perhaps you had third quarter against Essendon, perhaps even for a little bit of the last quarter against West Coast and the first quarter against Hawthorne? That's the yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, we haven't had a full four quarter performance. I thought Essendon was very good, but 15 minutes of um, sloppiness really hurt us and um, and some missed opportunities. So, look, I think we're solid. We're working through and we'll take three quarters or two and a half quarters out of Hawthorne, but our first 30 minutes was not what we're after. So we're, we're focused on um, training well and preparing well and um, give ourselves our best opportunity. Ross, is Nick Servan likely to be given another opportunity after a quiet game? Yeah, as I said, like, we're still working through it. You know, I, I just can't preempt selection totally here. So um, the teams go in tomorrow, I think, from recollection. We'll have another match committee. I think you'll just have to wait till it all comes out. Did you have the chance to have a chat with Nick about the weekend? Yeah, I talked to all my players, you know, try to get one-on-ones with them. It's hard to have 25 one-on-ones, but you just have quick little snippets here and there, and Nick was one of the guys I spoke to, yeah. Do you think he, as a character, like, has he got what it takes to bounce back? From yeah, we really respect and um, value Nick, so, but it's about what's best for the team. So um, we'll sit down and finalise that selection this afternoon. Ross, are teams getting better at handling the press or the cluster or whatever you want to call it, that sort of that defensive pressure that, that has been sort of in vogue since about 08 or 09? Yeah, I wouldn't know, you know. To be honest, we just work hard with the ball, without the ball, and it's been our disputed ball that has um, not been as strong as we'd like in patches. So I, I think everyone just focuses on... Well, there's lots of different mechanisms, you know. The press is just trying to lock it in your forward line. That's just one aspect. There's plenty of other components to team defence. And, um, 
you know, all of those teams that win the stoppages and get it forward and give their forwards opportunity tend to be the better teams. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, it's hard for me to make that judgment, to be honest. I, I think our best is very good, and clearly we value strong defensive effort, but like, but we really value contested ball more so. So, it, it's where it starts and finishes. And I thought in the first quarter we let ourselves down in the contest. We played collapsed back footy didn't get numbers to the ball and it was very unimpressive. But us at our best, we're a high contested ball team, numbers to the ball and, and give our forwards plenty of opportunities. The, the defence is the third, third component. So you're saying that you've seen some of that for two or three quarters in most games? Yeah, well I think you guys would have seen it as well. You know, yeah. I thought we saw it against West Coast, clearly against Essendon, and even when the game was up for grabs in the last quarter, we still had 15 entries against Essendon and kicked two seven. So, there's plenty of opportunities, um, even the middle two quarters on the weekend, I think we had 28 entries to 21 or something like that. So, um, well, we've got opportunities, we're just working through to play our best football and, um, you know, there's so many components to the game, it's hard to start on top of them all at the one time, you know. With, with their midfield, you sometimes go with one and sometimes go with two. Yeah. Is that they a team you have to think seriously about going with two? Yeah, I don't think I've ever really gone with two, to be frank. I think there's people that are accountable for people, but we are, we've only ever sat sat one. We might adjust on the run and say you need to respect him a bit more. But um, And last week we, we let Ryan take a few, which worked okay when he sort of did that. So, look, they're a really good team. We get that, you know. They're really early draft picks and Koch and Delidio. Martin is as talented with Grigg and those guys on the outside and Conker. You know, Knights is an experienced addition and they've added Chaplin, so... Um, but we need to, look, to our fans and our members, we're going to play our game. We're going to win the ball, we're going to go quick, we're going to put pressure on Richmond. So, for us, it's about us. You know, we're going to play our brand and we know it's good enough to get it done, but we've got to bring it to life. Do you make anything of the Anzac weekend when you talk to your players in the build-up of the game? What's really important for me is that they have an understanding of the day and what we're honouring. So, at the end of the day, you know, the Australian and New Zealand forces over a long period of time have um, been sent to battle by their governments, you know, to really protect the country and, you know, represent the free world, really, haven't they? So, but for our players, I, I don't ask them to play like the Anzacs and live the Anzac, because that, to me, would almost be disrespectful. What it is, it, from our end, it, it's on, on it's a really important day on the Australian calendar. It, it's a lot about um, where mateship and you know the, the view on mates and, and trust, where it originated from under real pressure, and, and you need to rely on your mates. So what we, we ask is an effort that honours that day. So honour the occasion with great effort because we, we feel that's what it deserves. We, we don't try and play because I think that would be disrespectful. Do you view it as the most significant day on the calendar for Australia? Me personally? I have my own views on, you know, obviously, you know, we're all immigrants to the country and, um, you know, but we're, we're a young country with a low population and, and really you know, the working class men of the country were cannon fodder really, weren't they? And um, we lost a generation of young men and, but it built a real spirit for this country and a way to go about things un under pressure and it, it gave us, you know, um, you know, the way we do things here and, and something to hang on to and cling on. It really, in a nutshell, helped forge our identity as a nation. So that's why it's important to me and I think that's why we're pretty keen and that's continued on through the ages, hasn't it? But unfortunately we're still involved in some conflicts and by the end of the day, you know, our, our, our soldiers still go and represent us in that manner. Can you just give us an update on Morabito, where he's at with his progress? Yeah, he's rehabbing, he's going well. I think he'll be talking to the media at some point and nothing significant except he's going really well. And uh, the update is that he'll update you guys. Any, anything on Zach Clark too, Ross? How far away? Yeah, we're really hopeful he should be available for selection this week. Um, so he, he trained at a really good speed. I, I was talking about for Peel, so... Yeah. He'll do, well it's only Wednesday, so he'll get another session in. Um, he's really important in the mix for us because he's, you know, a ruckman forward for us with obviously Matthew out. Um, we're, we're not uh, 
laden with tools on our list. So, um, you know, he's one we're pretty keen to get back up and quickly. But he should clear all his KPIs this week, specifically probably Friday. All going well. Not laden with tools, but uh, there's whispers around that Harry Taylor may be looking to move west. Is the type of player Freo would approach? Yeah, well, whispers are... I don't know what sure whispers are, but <laughs> I don't deal in innuendo and speculation. And I deal with the Fremantle Football Club and free agents. We, we get linked to anybody that moves, you know. Um, I think Ruzi's out of contract and we're trying to poach him out of retirement. So, um, look, I, I leave it to the list managers and, and, and don't speculate. So I can't help you, to be frank.